So welcome back to the May June 2018 paper uh, for A level physics right uh, let us begin the part 2 uh, we did six questions from the from the previous part and we'll start from question number 7 so a skydiver falls vertically from a helicopter and reaches a constant terminal velocity right the graph shows the variation with time of the speed of the skydiver so this is the graph of the speed with respect to the time which graph shows the variation with time t of the distance d fallen by the skydiver so in such sort of questions what you should consider here is that that you have been given a velocity time graph right and in order to find the you know the distance time graph you should know that the, the gradient of the distance time graph gives you the uh, speed and the gradient of the displacement time graph gives you the velocity respectively right so if this is the distance right and this is the time you should remember that the gradient is increasing here right as you can see here so the gradient is increasing so the speed is increasing right and then you see that the gradient becomes constant so that means the speed becomes constant so this part c perfectly aligns with the with this graph of speed time right a can't be true because you have again you know something like this that you have a constant gradient here and then you have a little bit of curve here and then you have a straight line so that does not perfectly match that one neither b nor d so c is the correct answer for this moving on a tennis ball of mass 55 grams is traveling horizontally with a speed of 30 meter per second the ball makes contact with the ball with a wall before rebounding in the horizontal direction with a speed of 20 meter per second the ball is in contact with the wall for a time of 5.0 times 10 raised to power minus 3 seconds. What is the average force exerted on the wall by the ball? So in such sort of questions, what is appropriate is that you make the data, right? So the data involves here is that you have this ball of mass, 55 grams, right? And uh, since it is traveling horizontally, the initial speed is 30 meter per second. I take the direction towards the right as positive, right? So this is traveling like this. This ball is traveling like this. The ball ma makes contact with a wall before re rebounding in the horizontal direction with a speed of 20. So the velocity in this direction is going to be minus 20 since you have a change of direction, right? And it has also told you that the time of contact is this. So average force, you know that the force is the rate of change of momentum right f is equal to mv minus mu over t so you apply that formula here right you have mass that is 55 you convert it into kilograms right you take this mass common right times 10 raised to power minus 3 kilograms right you, you take it out and you have the velocity which is the final velocity that is minus 20 and the initial velocity is 30 and you have the time which is 5.0 into 10 raised to power minus 3 so when you calculate the answer the answer comes out to be uh, about 550 newtons right the answer is minus 550 but the question here states that the ball is in contact with the wall for a time of this so what is the average force exerted on the wall by the ball so the force exerted on the wall by the ball is equal and opposite to minus 550. Right? That would be 550. Since Newton's third law is being applied here, right? Equal and opposite forces. Force on the wall by the ball is equivalent to the force on the ball by the wall. So if the answer here is minus 550, then the force on the wall by the wall is positive 550. So D is the correct answer. Moving on, an elastic collision occurs between two bodies X and Y, right? So this is a good information here that will help you a lot of, you know, problems. The mass of body X is M and the mass of body Y is 4M. Body X travels at a speed V before the collision and a speed 3V over 5 in the opposite direction after the collision body y is stationary before the collision 
what is the kinetic energy of body Y after the collision? So this type of question has many different methods to solve. One of the methods is that the kinetic energy, the total kinetic energy before collision is equivalent to total kinetic energy after the collision. That is one of the, you know, uh, the ways you can solve this question. The other easier way and uh, much simpler is that the velocity of approach is equal to velocity of separation rate. So you have velocity of approach u1 minus u2 is equal to v2 minus v1. So this is the velocity of separation, right? Let's say this is, I'll call this m1. And let's say this is m2, right? Object 1, object 2. This is object m1 again, and this is m2. So u1 is the initial velocity of x, and u2 is the initial velocity of y. v2 is the final velocity of uh, y and v1 is the final velocity of x. So you don't need the masses here at all, right? No need for them, right? However, if you are uh, doing the kinetic energy, uh, when you have to calculate the kinetic energy, you have to, you know, include that in the formula, of course. But for finding the speed, you don't need the masses, right? So what you're going to do here is that you have u1 as v, right? It, since it's traveling in the right direction, I take it as positive. And you know that, that this is stationary, right? This y is stationary, so I take that as zero. Uh, v2 is in this direction, I have to find that, right? I don't know that, I have to find that. And v1 is in the opposite direction, so I have to place negative sign here. So this is minus 3v over 5. So what I'll get is, I'll get V2 is equivalent to, since this would be positive, this will come here by algebra. This is going to be minus 3V over 5. So I have 5V minus 3V, which is equivalent to 2V over 5. So I have the final velocity here. And now I need to find the kinetic energy of body Y. So what I, I'm going to do here is that I'm going to calculate the kinetic energy by this formula. 1 over 2 MV square. I have the mass of that particle as 4m and the velocity is 2v over 5 whole square so I'll get what I'll get 4m divided by 2 times 4v square over 25 and that will give me what that will give me 16 mv square over 50 so the correct answer is C so this is how you will do such sort of questions right if you need to find the kinetic energy at the end, just find the speed and then you can apply that in the formula. Or you can also do that, what I've told you earlier, that you had to calculate the kinetic energy before the collision and after the collision. Moving on. So this question is one very interesting one in which it states that the density of water is 1 gram per cm cube and the density of glycerine is... Uh, 1.3 gram per cm cube. You have water. I'm going to make some... The, the best practice here is to make the data, right? So you have the water here. And the density of water is what that is. 1.0 grams per cm cube. And you have the density of glycerine that is 1.3 grams per cm cube. So water is added to a measuring cylinder containing 40 cm cube of glycerine so that the density of the, the mixture is 1.1. So you have, you know, 40 cm cube of glycerine and you add some water here in this glycerine, right? This is the volume of the glycerine, that is 40. And you add some water in that so that the overall density of the mixture, right? The overall density of the mixture is... 1.1 gram per cm cube right assume that the mixing process does not change the total volume of the liquid right so you have the total volume that has been added what is the volume of the water added so what you have to do here is that you should know that the mass of the water added and the mass of the glycerine should equate with the mass of the mixture right the mass of the water, you know the formula that since density is mass per unit volume, so mass is density times the volume. So density of water is what? Density of water is 1.0 
gram per cm cube. So what you're going to do is you're going to form this equation density of water times the volume of water, right? You need to find the volume of water, right? So you have this, right? Plus <laughs> density of glycerine times the the mass of glycerine, uh, the volume of glycerine, I'm sorry, right? That is equivalent to the, since you need to find the mass of the mixture, you have the density of the mixture times the volume of the mixture, right? So let's say the volume of the water is, for example, X. So density of water has been given as 1.0 uh, 1 times x plus density of glycerine is 1.3 and the volume of glycerine is 40 cm cube right and the, the density of the mixture is 1.1 and the volume of the mixture is 40 plus x so this forms an equation and you can easily solve this mathematical equation of 1.1 into 40 plus 1.1x and once you're going to solve this the answer is going to be 80 cm cube right uh, when you'll solve it all the way you'll get the answer that is 80 so this is how you will do such questions right moving on an astronaut throws a stone horizontally near to the surface of the moon where there is no atmosphere right so there is an astronaut who's, who throws a stone wood horizontally near to the surface of the moon where there is no atmosphere which road describes the horizontal and vertical forces acting on the stone after the release so in this question what you have to recognize here uh, that in the horizontal direction you have no force right since you are at the surface of the moon in the horizontal direction you don't have any force right and the vertical force is the force of gravity, right? It's going to be like a projectile, right? In a projectile, you know that there is no, if there is no air resistance, there is no force in the horizontal direction. But in the vertical direction, there is a constant force, and that is the force of gravity. So the answer for this horizontal force is zero, and the vertical force is constant, right? Question number 12 states that, that you have a cylindrical block of wood which has a cross-sectional area A. This is a cylindrical, let's say this is a cylindrical block of wood. It has a cross-sectional area A. I've got to draw it like this. Right? It has weight W. Always make the data. That will help you a lot. It is totally immersed in water with, it, with its axis vertical. The block experiences pressure PT and PB at its top and the bottom respectively. So you have PT here and you have PB here. Which expression is equivalent to the upthrust of the block? So remember that the upthrust is always due to the pressure difference. And you should know that the upthrust is simply the force, right? It's a force which moves the objects upwards if it is immersed, right? So you should know that since the pressure is force over area and the force is pressure into area, what is the difference in pressure? The difference in pressure is going to be PB minus PT since the pressure is greater at the bottom as compared to the top. So this is the pressure difference. So upthrust is going to be pressure into area, right? So upthrust is the pressure difference times the area and your answer would be B by all means. This is how you will solve such questions. So a uniform diving board is held by two fixed rods at points P and Q. A person stands at the end R of the diving board as shown. The forces exerted by the rods on the board are vertical. Now this is a very important statement here that the forces exerted by the rods on the board are vertical. The board remains in equilibrium as the person slowly moves towards point Q from and R. So there is no change in equilibrium. That is another very important information here. 
which row describes the changes to the to the forces exerted by the rods on the board so what you're going to do here is that you have something of this sort you have the force on the the force on the rods on the boards uh, by the rods on the board are vertical so this is one of the forces which is acting here and this is one of the forces which are which is acting here right and let's say this is the pivot right so for the for for the object in equilibrium the clockwise moment this is the clockwise moment so this this is the distance which is perpendicular and this is the force which is acting upwards so this is clockwise moment and this is anti clockwise moment right so when you have such sort of situation what you need to do here is that if this person moves here right what's going to happen this distance is going to decrease and this distance is going also going to decrease so this force is also going to decrease and this force is also going to decrease so since you have to main maintain the equilibrium right since you have to maintain the equilibrium so what's going to happen the force at p and force at q both are going to decrease right all the way so the answer for this would be a by all means you have two forces each of magnitude f they act in opposite directions on the rod each force acts on the rod at a distance d from the pivot p what is the torque of this couple about p so remember that for the torque of a couple you are considering an overall rotation so this is one of the rotation force and this is another force so it's forming a a clockwise rotation so one simple method is that you take this as a pivot and you have this as a clockwise moment and this as a clockwise moment as well so the total torque of the couple is f times d plus f times d and that's going to give you what that's going to give you 2fd so c is the right answer for this right moving on the vector diagram shows three coplanar forces acting on an object at p right you have these three forces which are acting at p the magnitude of the resultant of these three forces is 1 newton what is the direction of this resultant force so this is one simpler questions that you have so remember that it since this this is the 3 newton force and this is the 4 newton force if you you know place this here you get a resultant of 5 newton all the way so 5 newton is acting in this direction and 4 newton is acting in this direction so 5 minus 4 since they are in a straight line that is going to be 1 newton in this direction so the answer is d